So why, first of all, welcome. This is our ninth, um, our ninth go end. It is hard to believe that we're kind of reaching the end of our journey. Um, for me, I look forward to this night every month. Um, I've learned a lot. I've taken away a lot. I hope you have as well. So I actually prepared uh, a prayer based on a hymn, but we lift our voices. We lift our hands. We lift our lives up to you. We are an offering. Lord, use our voices. Lord, use our hands. Lord, use our lives. They are yours. We are an offering. All that we have, all that we are, all that we hope to be, we give to you. We lift our voices, we lift our hands, we lift our lives up to you. We are an offering. Amen. Amen. Just one other word uh, before we dive into tonight's topic. Um, we have been on a very exciting journey um, since January, and we've been learning different things, the different faith practices, different uh, strategies for ministry, et cetera. And we, uh, our team would like to just remind you that each of our congregations is different. We serve in different places. We serve different peoples. We all have different dynamics uh, within our congregations, within our communities, et cetera. So with that in mind, you may hear some things and you say, that is really cool. I could do that here, or we could do that here. You may hear some other things and you could say that does, is not going to fly in my community for practical reasons or for other reasons. Um, we just want to encourage you to take what is helpful to you, use it, adapt it, make it, mold it, make it yours. And the things that are not helpful, just leave them behind. We can't do it all anyway. So things that you just say, this is not going to work, don't worry about them. And we want to encourage you and give you permission to do both of those things. Cool. Thank you was the way that I want to start. Thank you, Judy, for this introduction. And thank you, everybody, um, to being with us this evening again. So um, our go and this day uh, has a lot to do with faith formation and also what we uh, name uh, about um, being disciples and followers of Jesus. One of the things that is part of uh, this journey um, is also uh, that this go and year, we have been encouraging relational evangelism. And uh, we know that that uh, starts and ends with listening. Uh, and um, uh, one thing that I heard this week that I really appreciate uh, is for most people being heard, um, uh, is, uh, feels like being loved. So uh, continuing to encourage uh, this. And tonight, as we engage in this conversation about go and make disciples, we understand that or uh, uh, face uh, practices as a journey, uh, as a process, as a way of life, as walking as disciples. And in that way, certainly continuing to building relationship with God, self and others and embracing faith uh, practices. Uh, go and, and make disciples is an invitation to the baptismal uh, living. And in that way, um, uh, through baptism, we are called to live among God's people uh, or faithful people, hear the uh, word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, serve all people following the examples, uh, the example of Jesus and strive for justice and peace in all the earth. And in that way also, uh, that what it encamped all is um, leaving out our faith. Uh, this is basically to equip us to leave out our faith in our daily vocation, in our daily life. And um, also because um, we care for people living uh, in poverty, struggling with hunger, disease, disaster, uh, we feel that um, a call to hospitality to strangers 
uh, to immigrants, to refugees in our midst. We care for creation uh, and we certainly also feel invited and uh, are called to advocate uh, for others. And um, I think uh, it's beautiful always to uh, remember what uh, Martin Luther said uh, in the way of understanding that faith is a gift and our faith is a living, busy, active, mighty thing. So um, uh, getting that from, uh, from Martin Luther. Uh, and then, uh, okay, a magic happened. Um, <laughs> and uh, to become a disciple means to become a lifelong learner, a student, a follower of Jesus. Uh, as we think about the reality of our churches, we thought that this um, flyer or graphic here would help uh, in the way of thinking more specific about um, uh, young adults as one part, we will be talking this day about children, um, youth, uh, uh, young adults, and then also uh, all um, levels of being adults. Um, if we think about young adults, uh, one of the things that is um, uh, said or, or shared is that 75% uh, of this age from 18 to 29 uh, left the church um, in, in, the uh, in the last years. And then again, it came the question about, okay, if that happened, uh, also what have we learned about the 25% that stayed? And, and here is, uh, are some details related to that. One is about, uh, uh, there the, the are kind of some, some reasons, some, some ways uh, to say, okay, what helped in this process to stay, uh, stay engaged in the church? One is to have dinner, uh, five to seven nights, uh, nights a week as a family. Uh, and I would say more and more to have time together to sit down at the table, uh, including also, okay, uh, maybe it's not five nights, maybe it is a breakfast, uh, maybe it is a lunchtime or so on, but sitting at the table and, 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 and having time to listen to each other. Uh, as family. The second reason seemed to be, or second thing that uh, it was noticed was uh, the, the thing to serve with their family in a ministry. And uh, it's, it's beautiful to notice that uh, having someone that uh, models uh, the face for young, uh, for children, uh, is very, very important and for all ages, certainly. Uh, the third one, uh, have one spiritual experience in the home during the week. And, and again, uh, uh, there are different uh, faith practices about what are the um, religious symbols that we have in our house, uh, and how do we engage with these spiritual practices in the way of exploring uh, a table prayer or um, that time uh, or prayer in the way to say, um, let's hear what happened during the day and give thanks uh, for God's presence with us or find a moment in family to share about a God moment, highs um, and lows. Uh, of the day or of the week, as well as blessings for daily life, blessings when we leave a house, a little message um, uh, into the backpack, um, uh, all of these things uh, children really love and youth also, uh, and parents and adults get um, better and better and get um, 
and they get into it and they get very creative in this way. So uh, I think uh, just naming that as ways to share our love, care rooted in our faith. And then have, have at least uh, one uh, faith focused adult in their lives other than their parents, other than someone uh, of the family. And here, it's a great opportunity for uh, church people, a part of our congregation, uh, grandma, grandpa, uh, and, uh, uh, someone that care for them, for, for children and adults, uh, that devote some time, ask, uh, uh, to them, uh, ask them about how are you doing? Maybe send a birthday card, uh, letters, uh, maybe a caring package for to a student that is uh, in college and then uh, entrust uh, with responsibilities in ministry at an early age uh, again this is a great opportunity to engage uh, young folks in the life of the congregation worship certainly is one place but that can go a lot beyond. I always like to think about that any event in the life of the church is an opportunity to raise leaders from gardening to food pantry to fellowship. Uh, and remember uh, the iron rule, don't do for others what they can do for themselves. So uh, uh, last, uh, I would say uh, for us to be attentive, to create opportunities and invite them to be uh, part of the life of the congregation. Thanks, Maristella. Um, I, I liked what you had to say, uh, especially with regard to um, talking about a legacy of faith and how that applies to discipleship. As a matter of fact, last night in Bible study, we talked about um, a legacy of faith and how that's passed down from generation to generation. And we talked about it with regard to the um, letter from Paul to, the, to uh, Timothy, his second letter. And we hear him talk about uh, Lois and Eunice. And um, I challenged uh, the people at my Bible study last night to think about and talk about those people who were the legacy of faith for them. The, what we're charged with in the agenda that I'm supposed to be talking about here is uh, about the legacy that Jesus gives us, the legacy of faith practice, the legacy of um, how we might understand God's love for us. Um, after Jesus was baptized, he spent three years teaching and preaching and healing and raising from the dead. He taught his followers to uh, share the grace of God through word and deed. He kept his teaching simple, simple and easy, so each disciple might be able to remember them. He taught using parables. And he made doctrine or, or hard facts um, and law easier to understand. Uh, for example, um, bringing the Ten Commandments down to two relatively simple commandments to understand. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And the, that is the first and the greatest of commandments. And the second is like it you shall love your neighbor as yourself. It sounds easy, but it's a lifelong journey. As uh, Maristella alluded in the earlier part of her uh, part of the presentation, she talked about the fact that a disciple is someone who is a lifelong um, sojourner, so a, a lifelong follower, a student, um, or learner. But Jesus did more than speak words. He lived his teachings. He embodied the love that he brought from our creator. He continues to invite people to become students, 
to become lifelong learners and to invest time in learning his techniques. We're going to break out into small groups. I'm not sure how many are going to be in the groups, uh, but we'll be breaking out. And I'd like you to think about this question. What does it mean for you to follow Jesus? Uh, we'll have a couple minutes on that, uh, a few minutes, and then we'll come back as a group and we will have a chance to uh, debrief that. But remember, what you're going to be talking about is what does it mean for you to follow Jesus? Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Um, so we're going to now debrief some of this. What does it mean to follow Jesus? What did you hear um, from your uh, co-disciples, co-fellow disciples in Christ? What did you hear? Um, is anybody, nobody's raising their hand. I can't see. Robert. One thing is to have patience sometimes. Very good. Yeah. With, without um, getting upset or yelling, knowing how to try to know how to deal with it. That's right. That is stepping aside and letting other people have a chance to say what they need to say. And even if it's not something I want to hear, right? Anybody else? Yeah, it's Katie. Um, I said for me, it's uh, spending the quality time in the morning with uh, God and getting me ready for the day. And um, Eleanor uh, also said about, you know, being in that moment at the time when you're having those difficulties uh, throughout the day, too, is, uh, you know, God helping us then, too. It's not just in our uh, morning um, devotions that uh, take place. Thank you, Katie. Yes. Mm -hmm. Soma, you were about to say something. Uh, yeah. Um, so a couple of things that came out in our group is. Um, somebody had a, the great quote, remember who you are and whose you are, mm -hmm. um, to be a lifelong learner with love, to talk about Jesus and listen um, to what God is telling you, to seek awareness and love, to love one another as uh, Christ loves us. Um, and then I was about to say, and we went poof, um, but to invite others to follow Jesus. So that's just a real quick, um, you know, list of the answers that came up in our group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Diane, did you want to say something? Um, I was just going to say, um, in our group, um, it, it was was pretty interesting. And the one thing um, we didn't, I didn't really get a chance to get a lot of it, but I thought it was really interesting that someone said that, um, or I may misinterpret, so please correct me. I understood to say that to follow Jesus was meaning to follow outside of the church, that um, they didn't feel that um, the church was actually able to, um, they were able to fully participate in uh, the church hasn't changed and is not accepting all oftentimes and still have clicks so that um, they feel that it's it's better um, to serve outside of the church and to let uh, Jesus shine in their doing um, outside of the church versus in the community of church. And please correct me. I don't want to call anyone out. Um, for me, um, what does it mean to... Um, to follow Jesus. I uh, said something to uh, the fact that for me, it's important that um, um, that I step outside of the church and so that the community can see Jesus through my eyes. And what that means is through my actions. And um, 
I did say that um, also I, I don't, um, sometimes people have believed that church is a social, Christians have presented the church as some kind of social club instead of a uh, ministry. Um, so um, I, I sort of understand what someone's saying, um, but I do believe that the, um, for me, um, it's outside of the church that um, following Jesus means stepping, stepping outside of the church where those who don't may know Jesus may come to know Jesus. And then those that may know Jesus can see that um, there are people like themselves who don't belong to a clique, but belong to Christ. Thank you. Would anybody else like to bring something up? Somebody from the group that I was in, you're welcome to say something. Uh, somebody named Jay Barry in our group um, uh, used a turn of phrase that kind of caught me off guard and I've been kind of ruminating on it since we did, I didn't uh, talk about it in the group, but, but you mentioned um, taking up the cross and doing so joyfully. Mm -hmm. at one point and um <clears throat> my my initial thought in my mind was i don't ever remember jesus saying you know take up the cross and do it joyfully uh uh but that that's why i didn't you know respond and, and i've just been ruminating on it because uh certainly there are plenty of other places uh where where joy is uh, part of the expression of, of a faith life and so forth, you know, but um, and yeah, that, that, that turn of phrase just kind of caught me. Uh, well, yeah, and what I started out saying was, it's hard to follow Jesus. Yeah. Um, and I pointed out that he asks us to, to take up our cross and follow him. And I, my question is, how do you do that joyfully? Right, right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's hard. Um, so yeah. Anybody else? Robert. One one thing that I thought of while we were talking about, and especially what Pastor Lewis said, my church has an outreach for um Feeding the Hungry, we have a pantry every Saturday. Um, we started trying to have what they co we're calling faith and fun days to show, what the, to show the community what we have, what we do. And one thing in my own life, which I'm trying to do, sometimes it's easier than I'm trying to just slow down mm -hmm. and give other people the right of way in the road, not trying to pass. You might get other people mad, but it feels good to let other people go. Yep. Yep. Can I, can I just say something? Um, sure. My grandmother um, would, went to, you know, church on Sunday, never was involved in any activities in the church. But to me, she represented um, a faithful person, a follower of Christ in the way that she treated the stranger or... Yeah, she, she, the way in her, her, her daily life. And um, I just wanted to say that. And what it sounds like is her example was, was a teaching for you and it taught you how to live your life, right? Is that what you're saying? Yes. And I, yes, but just by following an example of a good person yeah. and not necessarily any theology, any, you know, doctrine, any, anything, you know. Yep, yep. Would anybody else like to share? Jay, I want to share one other thing. I, I meant to share from our group and um, Pastor JJ, I think, uh, I mean, I may have to steal this from her, but um, when you actually walk out of her sanctuary, she has, um, I, I want to make sure that I say this correctly, but it's a quilt that is above the doors that says disciples entrance. 
So that's out into the community, which I love. And um, that truly is what I represent and what I believe. So that is truly awesome. Okay. Anybody else? Well, thank you very much for sharing. Um, and now uh, we will move on to Pastor Brett Ballinger. Pastor Brett, uh, it's with you. We are excited to hear about uh, the ways that uh, Prince of Peace is engaging uh, uh, children, youth, uh, uh, teens, adults, and new people in the life of the congregation and, and, uh, and in that way also uh, in the life of the community. You froze up there, Mary. earlier. Um, so uh, just a quick question. Um, I see we are behind schedule. So is that changing the amount of time that I have to present? No, you okay. can still present the amount okay. of time. We will adapt at the end. Okay. I just like to be respectful of everyone's time and everything. Okay. Well then I'm going to bring up a uh, PowerPoint, um, before I do that. Uh, so, um, you may have experienced, like I've experienced, Sunday school is different. Uh, people's interest in Sunday school or engaging with Sunday school is, seems to have changed in most places. Uh, and um, so my people were noticing this some time ago. In, in 2015 into 16, uh, we began talking about it and um, uh, noticed several things. And uh, we created uh, something we call, in place of Sunday school, discipleship practice. Uh, and uh, with discipleship practice, um, we kind of noticed that um, dropping off your kids for a Sunday school, that model really doesn't work. <laughs> um, it, it can, there has some success stories to it, but there's a lot of struggles to it because it's not really engaging the parents in their own spiritual life. And it's not showing the child that that's important either. <laughs> Right. And frankly, most parents have no idea what to do. <laughs> so many parents are kind of like uncertain to what even to do. So we decided we're going to do this process, uh, this process where we're going to uh, teach people um, about faith and faith practice and the way of Jesus um, as units. Uh, as uh, adults intergenerationally together, as parents and children. Uh, and for some children who show up without parents, we are also inviting members of the congregation with grown children or whatever, just to come and join us. Anyone is welcome. Uh, so it helps with kind of creating intergenerational connections as well, that additional faith person uh, that Maristella had mentioned uh, moments ago. Uh, and so um, here's the PowerPoint. So I'm going to be talking about this, this thing called discipleship practice, and then how COVID morphed it into something else, uh, and then uh, about uh, something else. So I, I want to kind of uh, go over all those things with you. Um, so thanks be to my um, uh, administrator who uh, made this uh, happen. <laughs> um, she uh, helped to create the... Uh, uh, the, the slideshow here. Yep. So discipleship practice. Um, I'm not going to read every slide, but uh, just going to give a kind of some core principles here. Discipleship practice is an intergenerational gathering of adults and children who seek to know how God is encountering us. Um, we do this through learning various practices that help us to recognize the continuing graces of God. Um, as we're called to be disciples of Jesus by taking up our crossing and following in Jesus' way. So at DP, that's what we call it, <laughs> uh, we attune our awareness to the truth that God is with us, claims us, and calls us to step into Jesus' way. And we do this, we do this by utilizing practices, behaviors, actions, processes, uh, to learn deeply the grace of God um, in all that is around and within and thereby be empowered to live a life of joyful response to these unending gifts. So you'll see in the picture there, um, everyone has a toolbox. Uh, and so we begin each year with people bringing in their toolbox or new people building their toolbox, and we're creating a spiritual toolbox. <laughs> um, and every year we are adding things to their toolbox um, of what uh, various, various practices, different things to do. And we'll get with, into what those are momentarily. Um, so, you know, kind of this is 
for me, it's all about awareness. How are we aware of God's presence already with us? So how are we helping our uh, everyone, young people and adults together to notice God's presence and where to look and all the different places to look and then to using various practices to do that? Um, and to how to see that and notice that. Um, and so we see God in our neighbors, in scripture, uh, in sacraments and ritual actions, and pretty much everywhere, right? Um, and so offering varieties of things, uh, different practice, not always a different practice each week, but um, sometimes we work on one multiple weeks and practice it, <laughs> um, but we kind of swing back around to them. So the these are for disciples who learn to encounter spiritual practice, help us to embody um, the above, those things that I mentioned above, know the stories of our faith that are in scripture and that we receive from one another. So, you know, the stories of faith, not just, you know, in the Bible, it's from, you know, what's the story that Maristella has to share of her experience of Jesus. Um, and then we do this thing, uh, fifth, I people, everyone at Prince of Peace knows what fifth is. It's an acronym for the five things that Jesus was about. You want to say, what did Jesus do? He fed people, he forgave people, he taught people, he healed people, all for the purpose of including them in the kingdom. You know, um, that was his primary work. That was his way of salvation, um, including the cross work is, uh, you know, all to bring people in. This picture here of me uh, is actually at a um, joint Jewish uh, and uh, Shavuot, the festival of Shavuot. Um, and Pentecost are on the same day. And so with the uh, different local Jewish congregations, we've been holding this festival together. Um, and uh, and typically, if it's a different Jewish congregation, each year, Prince of Peace makes an act of repentance on that day uh, for um, the work uh, of um, anti-Semitism that the Lutheran Church has been involved in and the adherence of Lutherans throughout time. And so we make a, 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 an act of repentance to our Jewish friends um, and uh, um, work towards reparation uh, with that. And so that was, uh, that's what that picture is. And so there is another practice um, that we invite everyone to come and experience and join in about uh, communal acts of repentance. Um, these are just some things that we use with the families to kind of see, you know, are you looking for these things? <laughs> um, uh, and uh, and then discipleship practices for you. It's kind of, you know, are you looking to, and so one of the things that, you know, parents can do all kinds of activities with their kids. There's way more exciting things that can to come to church on Sunday, you know, from sky zone to birthday party, to a football game, to lacrosse practice or whatever. Um, but do you have some of these relationships building possibilities and family connection? Uh, and uh, connection time with your others and uh, your children. And uh, so this is one of the key components that our parents like, that this is an intentional time with their child um, and with other members of the congregation to engage in helpful things that help them guide them throughout the week. So I'm going to give you a list of the spiritual practices. We do not do all these spiritual practices uh, in discipleship practice um, with kids, because some of them are, are, we have to gauge them towards adults and children. So different, and, and some of them can be um, turned around, but we've just created this very long list. Uh, I will see that Maristella has this PowerPoint so you all can have it and look at it more, you know, at your leisure um, in, in the future. Um, but there's various types of prayer, right? So, you know, Jesus prayer, fasting, almsgiving. So it's broken down into those three categories, but so there's all kinds of prayer from liturgical, vocal prayers, liturgical, that sort of thing. Um, arrow prayers are things that we just shoot up suddenly. We do a whole activity with practicing, um, playing uh, with uh, inside bow and arrows, you know, suction cups uh, and doing this activity and the kids make little quivers uh, to put arrows in them and, and they have little prayers on them that they write. Um, but it's a, an arrow prayer is something you would shoot up in the moment um, you know, you hit, like we hear just heard the fire engine go by just now, maybe um, at my house here. And we pray for the firefighters. We pray for to where they're going. We pray for, you know, just a Lord be with them. Lord be with the people to whom they're going. 
you know, may they be safe, <laughs> you know, and so teaching them, that's a practice we teach, and then inviting for them to look at, uh, look for places to do it all week long. Um, memorize prayers, you know, and so there's certain prayers that we try to have them at, we, as part of our opening ritual that they're doing over and over to try to get them to have some things um, in their repertoire of uh, various prayers. Um, other ways spiritual practices include singing and hymns and mantras, uh, little phrases that you sing. We have all these little... Um, We've uh, just started a worship service, which we call um, uh, Hesed, um, God's Gracious, Steadfast, Faithful Love. Uh, and it's all made up of, uh, I don't know if any of you have done the Music Makes Community um, experience, uh, but sign of those songs, you know, Behold, behold, I make all things new, beginning with you and starting from today. And then repeats, behold, behold. So all these kind of little simple songs um, that they learn. And then actually there's little other parts that you can they quickly turn them into rounds or turn them into harmonies. Um, and they're like, wow, wow, how do we make that sound? You know, after just teaching them two lines of music. Um, but that's a, a big part of, we, of what we do uh, with that music with them. Uh, you may see the grace at meals as prayer dice. So one of the, one of the practices that we do is how do they see a mealtime grace? And so teaching them how to create them, how to write them. Uh, we often give out these little wooden dice that are three, two inches by two inches, whatever that has a prayer on each corner. So they could roll the dice at the table and read the prayer on the dice, you know, um, learning, teaching them to create their own. Um, so just kind of all different ways. So the whole unit um, or a day unit on, you know, prayers, grace at meals, um, how to do grace uh, after you go through the drive through you know, is uh, a thing, you know, is, is part of that unit um, and how to make it fun. Uh, and then a whole bunch of other spiritual practices related to prayers. So, you know, there's, there's, so we talked about vocal prayers, but then there's mental prayers. Um, you know, things that we do with our mind more specifically. So we teach kids actually a simple Lectio Divina about reading a short little story and what sticks out in you in the story. And then why do you think that part's sticking out for you? And what do you think God wants you to do with that part that's sticking out? You know, just that's those simple, those are three major practices or portions of standard Lectio Divina. And we just break it down simple for kids. And we pick, you know, we don't pick like last week's parable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> pick a different one, you know. Um, uh, so uh, let's see. Um, then uh, art. The, uh, almost all of our sessions have some kind of activity that reinforce is reinforced um, with, through art or something. Um, and then all of our things always have a, can, an area of stillness, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, oops. Um, then fasting, we have some a unit or two um, on different types of fasting. And we don't typically don't cover letter E uh, with um, the kids, but um, <laughs> Uh, but there is, you know, other types of, you know, fasting. What does it mean to fast from food? And how do we do that? And why would we do that? And and they totally get it. They totally, it's so amazing. How, they totally get about fasting from activity because they know what it's like to be overscheduled, right? They know it and they know that they don't like it gen all the time, you know? Um, they really get it. So it's an opportunity for them to be honest about it, to talk about it. And it's interesting for parents to actually sometimes hear their child for the first time say, I don't like running from this to this to this. Hmm, parents generally don't either, <laughs> right? And it gives them an opportunity for freedom to talk about some things. Um, and then and then, so there's some other things here, you know, about giving and service and uh um, and, and, and we're creating opportunities to do service. Uh, we do this thing for the, it's called the Siemens Church Institute here in Philadelphia. Some of you know the Seafarers International closer to New York, um, but we always do ditty bags for them uh, in the fall. Um, and, uh, and they come in and talk to us. And, and so we, that's one of our service units uh, that we do there. Um, and so the last one, number 10, is what I want to talk through in a minute. Um, we're going to do remembrance. So I'm going to actually share a particular um, one of the sessions in full, kind of in full, what we do. Um, so here's, here's what happens. 
Um, and you can see actually on the wall back here, these are old prayers, um, but prayers that they did for were the opening, um, changing some of those up this year. Um, but uh, the first 10 minutes is a gathering activity because no one shows up on time or they don't show up at the same time. Right. So we have some kind of activity that they can join in. But before that, they do uh, some kind of ritual centering activity where each of them is taught to go. And you see the picture of Jesus over here. Um, they go over and stand in front of Jesus um, and teach them to breathe and to be still and be quiet for a moment and to acknowledge that God is present around and within. Um, and then uh, then they light a candle. Everyone lights a candle. We have the sand pots they put it in. Uh, and uh, to remind, there's a little thing they say um, that uh, Jesus is the light of the world. And Jesus is, says, I am the light of the world too, right? Which are both scripture, paraphrases of scripture quotes. Um, and then they go to a place of water uh, and touch the water and bless themselves on their forehead and with a statement about baptism. Um, God has claimed me and chosen me forever in my baptism. Um, and uh, then they'll, um, then they were in, a new thing we've just started doing is teaching them how to find an intention. So for the, well, basically there's a bunch of cards there uh, that have different words. You know, my intention for today, at the, like all the gifts of the spirit is joy. My intention for the day, how I want to be today is love. My intention for the day is peace. My intention for the, you know, so all of those uh, fruits of the spirit um, and then some other things, you know, um, that we add to it. But so they get to stop and think and say, today, I will follow Jesus by living in joy. And so we ask them throughout the morning when they're together, what's your intention to follow Jesus to live in joy, you know, and for them to kind of keep. So it's like a compass for the day. Um, and so we kind of just kind of keep asking them. Then the next 12 minutes is kind of an opening uh, ritual thing that we do is if everyone gathers. So there's they do this little individual centering thing and then they do like an activity um, like uh, a coloring sheet or a word find. There's some different ones for different age kind of brackets because we do it all together in all ages. Um, uh, sometimes it's a craft activity, but not too involved. Um, and then once everybody quote is there, we're ready to start five minutes after the hour, then we begin with this opening ritual and centering. Um, and again, uh, so there's an invocation that said, there was again a time of stillness and each time we tune to a different sense. So sometimes we're using our ears because remember we're looking for God all around. So how am I using my ears? How am I using my nose? How am I using my touch um, and feel? How am I using my eyes? Um, even taste uh, and um, so sometimes we do that with the taste one with a raisin. We have everyone get a raisin and they chew it and see how long they can chew it and how long it can and taste and what all the different things they taste in it and what's it like and what's it doing in their mouth and, and all this kind of, uh, you know, just various things. So it's just a moment to kind of tune in and get all awakened to their senses. Then a reminder of their intention. They announce, everyone announces what their intention is that they decided during their opening ritual. And then there's usually a song we're working on each season. Uh, there might be a seasonal prayer, depending on what the practices we've chosen. And then we review last week, what we learned last week. Um, and someone will share how they did it last week. Yeah, we were going to the fall game and an ambulance went by and we did the arrow prayers, you know, or um, whatever the one they were practicing the week before. And we asked them to share stories. And uh, sometimes we have to kind of rein that in, <laughs> you know, to kind of keep moving. Um, and then we share the scripture story for the week that's based on the Bible study or the Bible, or the you know the spiritual practice we're going to learn that day. And then we ask them what their intention is again, or no, don't ask them to share it, but call it to mind um, how they want to be. And then we get into the actual program. Um, and so they learn this particular practice, they practice it, whatever it might be. And then we have various reinforcing activities that we do to um, uh, build the activity. So like the arrow prayer thing I was talking about, um, they um, uh, uh, will create, we, we do the activity of practicing shooting these fun little, you know, indoor bow and arrow things, you know, they love that, right? And then they create um, quivers to put little prayers in that they write on arrows that they do on pop uh, tongue depressors. And we create, have feathers on the end and put little paper points on the other end and, um, or even glass 
not sharp, but you know, uh, arrowhead kind of things that we found somewhere, and um, and then they write a prayer on it, um, and uh, or people to remember in prayer uh, that they can pull from there. So there's d different things uh, like that. Um, and then, uh, then we make some connections to the scripture that we've chosen. So this, the arrow one is, is you know, several places in Ezekiel uh, and Isaiah um, about shooting uh, prayers up to God. Um, and one is in particular shooting prayers like arrows to God. Um, and then we do the practice again. Uh, and then there's ascending at the end. Again, recalling their intention. Uh, everyone gives a prayer of thanks for something. Uh, we talk about who we're praying for. Everyone, we, we give a name, people or situations we're praying for. We pray the Lord's Prayer, Jesus' Prayer. Um, and then uh, an exhortation to practice the practice in the upcoming week. Um, and then uh, and then everyone receives a blessing uh, by, um, there's a family. So each, each time there's a family in charge. Um, and so uh, they get to receive a blessing by the pastor if the pastor's there, as well as the, this family members of the family will bless people um, and uh, or and one of the other staff people that help make that all happen. Um, and so, for example, so the pictures that you've seen through these last couple slides are them doing the Koliva uh, exercise. This is a practice of remembrance. It comes to us from the Eastern uh, tradition, Eastern Christians, where they make a memorial food on the um, anniversary of someone's death. And so we almost always do this on All Saints Sunday. So this is a spiritual practice we do every year. Uh, and, and this is the one where I get the most congregation participants who come additionally. <laughs> so I have, you know, all the families and stuff that are there, but I get a lot more people just from the congregation because they like to do this because they use it as a time to remember people. Um, I encourage them to do it in their own home with uh, family members. And some of, some of our families definitely um, do this. But so I have a recipe. If you're interested, I can see that you get it. It's not in the PowerPoint. Um, but it's basically made up of wheat berries and all these things. There's sesame seeds, there's parsley, there's nuts, um, there's uh, dried fruit, uh, raisins, cranberries, whatever you want, um, uh, graham crackers that are crushed, um, some spices, they're mostly um, uh, cinnamon and, and that sort of thing. Um, and uh, 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 salt, pepper. So, and as you, you have all these things pre laid out and set up, um, and then you pick somebody who is ahead of time, who's chosen of someone they're going to remember. So, um, the last time we did this, unfortunately, because of COVID, um, we used my mother, um, cause my mother had died, um, in 2019. Um, and so that fall, uh, we, um, uh, use my mom. And so you uh, remind yourselves about the promise of death and resurrection with as you add the wheat berries um, in your, uh, of, of Jesus' promise that we are with him always and that the, which dies will be raised. Um, and then you think about the seeds. What is uh, something that that person who you're remembering who's died has planted in you? Um, you know, what, what, is, uh, what, have they, what kind of gift have they given to you? Um, and how are, will you be able to, do you continue to carry that? Um, and then you have to be honest, and what are the bitter hard parts of their life? What was difficult about them uh, and, or the difficulties they faced? Um, what were the crazy fun parts of their life? You know, the nuts, um, uh, and remembering their whole life, the dried fruit. So, you know, old people shrivel up and get wrinkly. Uh, right? Um, and if if they lived old, um, you know, but kind of just talking about, you know, what are some stories you remember from their life? Uh, what are the broken pieces of their life? Um, uh, what was unique about them? The spices, the specific spices, you know, so what was unique about them? What made grandma unique or whatever? Um, and how did they bring out the best in you when we look at the salt? Um, and then the sweetness. And so it's all mixed together and then it's placed down and, and placed. And then there's these various things. So here you, we use a little template and we use powdered sugar over top um, and across. And then usually it's either the letter here, they have a T. So they're remembering somebody with the name T, the slivered almonds. Um, and these are Jordan almonds, I think around, no, they're not. There's some other, something else, some other piece. But then it's actually really tasty. I know you look at it and you think, what the heck? That doesn't look very good. But um, uh, so it is uh, really uh, just 
so uh, people just really enjoy it a lot. So, uh, Pastor Brad, I yeah. see several messages saying that people want the recipe. All right. Yep. I'll well, I'll be sure to send it to you. Thank yep. you. I'm on a little card. Pretty simple. Well, it's, it's a little involved, but it's it's worth it. Um, I, I, uh, farm it out to somebody else to do. <laughs> all this stuff to bring it in already chopped and yeah you want to have it already chopped and just kind of add and talk and then the kids make it um so actually just quickly back through you can see they're working on it here you can see the sheets on the table where some of the preliminary activity that they did um you know here's he's uh he's got you can see the down here the little paper cross that he's doing the um powdered sugar over top of right and they'll lift that off and there'll be the cross there um, you have to push it all down. So we use wax paper to kind of push it all down first to make it solid. Um, it's really good on ice cream. So sometimes we bring in ice cream and put it over ice cream, but it's good straight up too. All right. So this was, um, so this is kind of this thing that we developed called discipleship practice and, um, and all of these kind of different practices. And I wish I had it all together in one binder of one curriculum of all the practices with all the details and most of the time our team is kind of flying by our pants <laughs> to be honest pulling together it is uh, should i get a sabbatical or or some great gift of time or whatever i hope to kind of pull it all together into something that can easily be handed to others to replicate covid happens Ugh. no one wants to get together right and we shouldn't be getting together right all very kind of, what are we going to do and so i thought well um we these everyone needs to be together and we need to figure out a way to do this and um some of you know that i'm a friend lutheran franciscan um and very much about the outdoors um and so we created during covid um something called divine encounter um divine encounter discipleship practice and confirmation this year uh, will be a learner-led inquiry-based exploration of our natural environment to provide encounters for the individual and the group to learn more deeply about the created order while allowing the experience to serve as a springboard to greater knowing or wisdom of spirituality, faith, stewardship, life, and practices of a disciple as we live into the larger life questions of God's presence and action in the world. So basically, what we're doing is, again, playing with the whole, working with our senses, right? And so we would, um, the primary piece is we go out into the woods um, and we pick a sense that we're going to focus on for the day. And we're, what are we hearing? And so whereas we take a walk, so we discover this beautiful preserve <laughs> has bogs and lakes and trails. And it's like, wow, I never knew in all my time in Marlton. Um, you know, I've been here 17 years and for 15 years, I didn't know this place existed. <laughs> um, and here it is. And um, so we would go out and, and so then we would use what they hear and, and discover and notice as a springboard to some kind of learning or conversation. Now, this required some work ahead of time. So we created a list of things like um, Stories related to birds, scripture stories and things related to um, trees, scripture stories, things related to the earth, scripture stories related to fire, to water, to wind, to, um, and then whatever they were noticing and talking about, whatever the most was, we jumped into a scripture story talking about it. So, for example, uh, it's really windy this day, everyone's talking about the wind. So we talk, well, can you see the wind? Is that, you know, what, 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 how do we know this wind was there? Well, we see what it does, you know? And so then we go into the passages about the spirit and the wind. We do not know from where it comes or where it goes, you know? And, um, and so we had some little cards actually was put on um, a document that we could look up on our phone, <laughs> you know, for the exact scripture verses and that kind of thing. Um, one day we're walking along and we discover all this erosion on this little hill bank. And it looks just like the um, the the catacombs in uh, Cappadocia, all those caves that the early Christians hid in, right, and painted in. And so we brought that up on our phones uh, and showed them these these stories and told them the stories of the of the early Christians having to hide and why they had to hide and and so on and so forth um, uh, with with that. Um, 
So a little more here. Um, so really, so at the center of this program is God with us, right? Um, uh, and start with the learner's sense of curiosity and um, and, um, and 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 helping them tune their observation of looking for where is God all around. So I mean, one whole time, <clears throat> you know, uh, we're looking at uh, leaves and all the veins on leaves, uh, and then they start oh veins in our body and lifeblood and blood and um, connection, how God, how we're all connected. And it just, all these things can kind of like spin around. So you'll see in this picture here, um, this was the center picture in the center is they did nativity scenes out in the woods. And so this is a nativity scene. Uh, so it's hard, it's hard to see, but there's a, a baby Jesus there and there's Mar Mar uh, Joseph and Mary as pine cones. Um, and I think this here is an angel. They put some uh, swigs on it that made it look like arms coming out, um, that kind of thing. Uh, another day, we have them create, um, uh, we read a Bible story, I think, and they created um, uh, particular things related to the story. Um, I don't remember which story this was, but um, they uh, you know, took whatever they could find and created something. Uh, and then here's just a, a, some other pictures uh, from, uh, so one day we took an extra, some extra flowers with us for them to create uh, some kind of uh, artwork uh, with that. And I'm going to finish up with, a uh, last thing I want to say is, um, so these are some books. Oh, so I will say um, the final thing, the, uh, so I went off to one of my uh, gatherings with my Franciscan siblings and I was talking to the minister general about this. And he's like, well, you should connect with the Wild Church Network. The Wild Church Network is a, um, a Christ-centered group of people who are using the outdoors um, as a springboard into faith and faith exploration and spirituality. They have a Facebook page. They have a, um, a, um, a website, et cetera. I have the link on the next page. Um, but these are some books um, that uh, are helpful uh, in some of this. So the top two are two books about outdoor forest church, church of the wild, that kind of thing. I mean, there are some churches that that is their model. That's their, their whole ministry is they don't have a building, you know, they meet at some location outside and sometimes it's the same place. Sometimes it's different places. These are three different, uh, and actually there's one on the next page, prayer books, uh, all by J. Philip Newell on the bottom, um, but also are all very, um, sense oriented, uh, for our senses and uh, and listening and attunement to God and and um, so I just commend them all to you. They're just really great. They tend to be these ones tend to be a little bit more adult focused, whereas this one is definitely children focused. Um, and it's a very simple, repetitive. The scripture verses are read are written in very child friendly language, um, and it kind of covers a theme of a whole several chapters sometimes. Um, it, it's really well done. So it's um, 48 um, devotionals in here uh, that we encourage our families to do. And then um, the other thing related to the wild stuff, the outdoor stuff, is a pl great place called Seminary of the Wild. Um, it's an online institute um, of uh, helping create uh, greater experiences um, in using uh, creation as a springboard, the first book, right? So Luther called creation the first book of God. Um, and they have some great anti-racism stuff too there at that um, uh, at the seminary of the wild. All right, felt like I raced through that, but that's what I have to present, everyone. Um, I don't know if there's any questions. Thank you, Pastor or... Brad. Um, oh, this is this was very rich and inspiring. Um, questions to Pastor Brad, about clarifying something or 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 so on. I have a question. It's Katie. Hi, Katie. Hi. So, did you do this once a week, once a month, when you did the um, meeting together? So, right. So, discipleship practice is is once a week um, mm -hmm. during the regular academic year. <laughs> right. Uh, we don't meet in the summer. Uh, and then with the, uh, the, during COVID, we met four times a month, three times a month. Uh, we skipped the last Sunday of the month. We had that off, um, but we met rain or shine. So it, no matter what the weather, when we did the outdoor stuff, 
Um, so we I have it with adults now as well, um, and we do it uh, uh, with adults. Uh, the outdoor piece, the divine encounter, um, and it's a rain or shine. It's working with resilience. I can't tell you a confirmation. One of the best confirmation classes I've ever had is it was pouring rain, and it was my class was all boys that day, and they had so much fun. Just you know, thirteen year olds, fourteen year olds jumping in puddles, um, splashing. They were drenched, um, you know. But it was they. This this is the tightest confirmation group I've ever had. Um, mm. They're coming back to the retreat this weekend. We have our confirmation retreat this weekend and the, the 10th graders want to come back because um, they kind of get gypped out of the retreats because of COVID, <laughs> um, but they want to come back and and be with everybody. So uh, five boys, it's like, wow. okay, bring it, come on. <laughs> yeah, wow. Did, um, did you do it uh, at night with the young kids or was it on a Saturday or a Sunday? Yeah, when? so, right. So the 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 so when we did the outdoor thing, Mm -hmm. uh, with the kids, it was a Sunday morning. Um, so, uh, after worship, um, and then confirmation we had to do because we still had to do it when it wasn't dark. I was normally, we met Sunday nights, but we changed it during COVID because they also didn't have a whole lot of other things to do. So right. they were, they met at one in the afternoon till two 30, um, and, uh, right in the middle of football time, but they were showing up. Um, so next 2020 there wasn't football so um <laughs> but anyway um yeah so it worked out uh tension um uh, i'll see that you get the recipe as well as that you're welcome to look at the powerpoint and if anyone wants to have a conversation with me um i'd be willing to do that as well thank you again pastor brad jill pastor jill okay um so i just want to also thank brad i i i um I found that activity, just hearing about the activity of um, baking in remembrance or to be so moving and uh, that's beautiful. But in a way to equip people to be, to be with one another through that important life formation of, of grieving together. Um, so um, we just, I just want to think a little bit about, you know, we've been talking about discipleship and discipleship practices. Um, the, the sort of move that we find that is made in scripture is, is the movement from, uh, or not from, but how at disciples become apostles. Those of us, all of us who are sent, therefore, uh, into the world. The question uh, to leave us with as we hear our closing scripture is, how might God be equipping you to be sent on God's mission into the world? Um, in um, in our congregation, we just put a tree up in the narthex uh, because we're going to be spending the year talking about what it means that we're rooted in Christ and reaching out into the world both. Um, so as people who are rooted in the, in the practices of discipleship and continue to deepen those roots, how then might we be equipped? Might you feel that you're being equipped as a disciple to go, to go and to go and um, be a follower of Jesus in the world in any of the vocations or arenas in which God calls you. So that is a sending question uh, for us tonight. What does it mean for us to not be uh, disciples alone, but disciples who are sent? Hmm. Uh, Diane, are you going to send us with resources? Uh, yes, in the um, PowerPoint, um, and I can send that to everyone. Um, there are some resources that uh, can be used. Um, there is a book, Faith Practices, Living Our Baptism by um, ELCA, other resources, Faithful Families, Creating Sacred Moments at Home, Courageous Leadership, The Big Four Ministries with Jake Sorison, um, and also You Lost Me, Why Young Christians Are Leaving Church and Rethinking Faith, mm -hmm. uh, and also Vibrant Faith of the Congregation by David Anderson. But I will put all of these into the chat, and um, everyone can see these. So I will do that. 
now. Well, uh, I do want to thank everyone for uh, joining us today. I especially want to uh, thank um, Pastor Brad for um, uh, all of the information he shared with us. And um, I want to uh, thank everyone for participating in each of the sessions. And um, I think um, it is important for us to think about, um, you know, um, as disciples, um, what do we do? Disciples. Um, one of the flyers says, God is cracking, opening the church to go in. And uh, I spoke also about uh, Pastor JJ, who has the um, uh, quilt in her church. Um, so I think it's so important that um, we are stepping outside of the church to um, show that as disciples of Christ is that, uh, and followers um, as disciples of Christ and followers of Christ that um, we are not just indoors, but we're outdoors, we're listening, we are joining our neighbors in love, um, that we are ready to serve, we're ready to meet people. And at the very beginning, um, Maricela uh, spoke about the five uh, gifts of discipleship um, that, you know, as we affirm our baptism, we're to live uh, amongst God's faithful people, hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, serve all people following the examples of Christ and strive um, for justice and peace in all the earth. So I think, uh, and I do again, thank everyone for coming. And uh, I think if we start out remembering always our baptism, I think we will be um, always um, shine as God's disciple and people will see that we truly are the church of Christ. Amen. Thank you. There is a quote. I hope my internet connection allows me to share this. Uh, Martin Luther uh, has one of the saying that says, this life therefore is not godliness, but a process of became, becoming God, godly, uh, not health, but getting well, not being, but becoming, not rest, but exercise. We are not now what we shall be, but we are on the way the process is not yet finished, but it is actively going on. This is not the goal, but it is the right road. At present, everything does not gleam and sparkle, but every, everything is being cleansed. Thank you. Uh, see you uh, on October 27 at our next go and uh, our guest will be our Bishop Tracy Bartholomew. Blessings to all of you. Bye bye. Thank you. Very, Stella. Blessing. Thank bye. you. Thank you. I have a good Stay night. On and Brett also. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Brett.